Ido Shove writes, do beautiful shots like in The Revenant require special talent or simply time and dedication? Uh, both. Yep. Both. I mean, they had to scout those locations for a long time and they had to, they shot very few hours out of the day to get the look that they wanted. So they had to be pa- very patient. Because allegedly, didn't they only use natural light? Yes. Yeah, I, there's that's only, insane. Yeah. They used natural light for almost everything except for a couple scenes where with the campfires, they couldn't get enough light on the actors' faces, so they used a little bit of light there, but everything else was natural light. So, but I mean, it's talent. Uh, Lubeski, who, who may be winning his third Oscar for cinematography in a row, he, he may be getting it this year. I thought The Revenant was a gorgeous film, along with Sicario. I think those are my top two best looking films yep. of the year. So, yeah, I, I, it, it's both. Yeah, I say both. Yep, I agree. All right, what's next? All right, M. Evan writes, if Ryan Coogler chooses not to direct Creed 2, do you think MGM would ask Sylvester Stallone to take over? Mm, interesting. Uh, maybe. Um, I think that he, look, he's, he directed Rocky 2, he directed Rocky 3, uh, Rocky Balboa. Um, I don't think he directed 4. He might have. But um, I, but he's direct, he, knows the, he obviously knows the character really well. I happen to think, though, the reason he did his best work, maybe ever, in this movie was because he didn't have to worry about that stuff. Mm-hmm. He just focused on on Rocky and he knocked it out of the park. And I do think that it'll, I think he needs to be nominated. Now, whether or not he wins, I don't know. But I think that you can get someone else because Ryan Coogler needs to be involved in this film. Now, whether or not he's directing, um, I don't know. But writing, he needs to write. He needs to produce, produce. it. He pitched this. This franchise was dead. Sloan wanted, nope, not doing it. Then he saw Fruitvale Station. Then it happened. Coogler needs to be involved and they can find someone else to continue the vision. And I think Stallone would do great, but I think, you know, step back and let somebody else do it. Yeah, I agree with you, especially because I think the most recent movie he directed wasn't the first Expendables. That, that, to do the most Stallone's, recent one? The most recent movie that Stallone directed, I think, was Expendables. Maybe, did, the first I, Expendables. Yeah, because he did, and he did and, The Last Rambo also, too. Did he? he? I remember mm. the first Expendables, and I could no, tell. Okay. I was like, man, you really should have stepped yeah. away and let someone else direct this film. So, right. I, yeah, I, I'm with you. I think I think Coogler should be involved somehow and maybe get a different, if if they're going to move forward with it without Coogler, get a different director in, in there. Yeah, especially some young blood might be kind of nice. Not to say that, I agree with you, Christian, not to say St- Stallone can't do it. He, of course he can. Um, but it, I think that, you know, you've got this franchise that's had this rebirth and it's youthful and it's and it's energized by a different, you know, a different community and and different, different perspective that's being brought to the material and I think going continuing down that track is probably the best option for the franchise. All right, what's next? All right, this is just a shout out because I thought this was amazing. Aiken for some Aikens rights. I love you guys <laughs> and watch the show every day. I'm about 30,000 feet up in the air right now and watching. Thank God for Wi-Fi. Wow. Oh, wow. Thanks. Um, all right, Thomas Bergstrom writes, Stephen Fry is the host for the BAFTAs. What about him and Hugh Laurie for Oscar hosts? They would make a good comedy duo. Uh, I mean, I think they would make a great duo. I don't think the American audience would want to see that. They, they're not as familiar with them as, as some other people are, so I just don't think it could happen. You know, I love um, Ricky Gervais when he hosts the Golden Globes, uh, but I think that I love that because the Golden Globes are basically a big dinner party yeah. where yeah. everyone's wasted, yeah. and and that is the appropriate place for you to have fun. It's almost like a roast when he does. Yeah. Same with uh, Amy Poehler and Tina Fey, to be honest. So, um, so, so I think that there's, you know, the Oscars. I know it sounds like I'm beating down the Oscars, and I'm sorry, but they're just so stuffy mm-hmm. that you know I. I don't think that the audience would go for it. Then again, I don't know who the audience is, everyone apparently, yeah. but I, I don't know. I, I don't think the audience would go for a more goofy, silly, fun, um, dry British Oscar telecast. Although can, I would like it. Can they be worse than Anne Hathaway and James Franco? I don't no. think so. I don't think so. And but, they, look, and we didn't, we, didn't respond, but, we didn't respond to them. The thing is, it's, for me, the way it always is, I'm always going to give somebody a shot. And if they've done some things in the past that warrant them being there and give them a shot. I think the difference with with those guys is that and, and Ricky Gervais is that Ricky Gervais is there to mess you up. Right. That's why he's there. And that's why you hire him. He's here he's there to throw shots. I think these guys will, will could bring um a little bit more class to the Oscars. Who knows? Uh I, I would we haven't had a great Oscar host in a little bit. I still think Hugh Jackman should do I was just about to say um, I think Hugh Jackman would I think great. Hugh Jackman would be great. And I think that 
you have um i mean neil patrick harris was a disaster seth seth um McFarlane. McFarlane was i i enjoyed i enjoyed him but i don't think he was for everyone i think he was more of a case that he wasn't for everyone so i don't i don't know i mean who knows what people are going to respond to i think good hosts that put together a good show that's who's going to succeed well and look i mean who is the quintessential oscar host it's it's in the last however many years it's billy crystal, billy crystal. and yeah. you know billy crystal is an old school comedian and he he's singing and dancing and he's he he's for your parents I, I love Billy Crystal yeah. I'm not hating but like you know he's not for us he's not for the young viewer at home and that's who the audience or you know that's who the Oscars are targeting and I don't well they're know. trying to get because they are, know they already have the older audience so they want to try and get some of the youth to watch it and like back to the other question we had in Mailbag about getting you know maybe more popular movies I don't think we should nominate movies just because they're popular but I do think that the Academy needs to recognize stuff that that is not their norm, which which is hilarious because back in the day, Oscars used to nominate comedies all the totally. time. Totally. But not anymore. Never. No, now, not now it anymore. has to be a drama. Well, yeah. the, talk about The Exorcist. The Exorcist was nominated for like 14 right. Oscars, including Best Picture. And guess what? It was one of the best pictures of the year. Just because it's this, I mean, I know I'm always on my horror. Well, but it's different though. I, the thing with horror now too, is, and I think what horror has kind of has kind of shot itself in its foot because the difference between, say, Exorcist and now is that you get so many like you get something like The Conjuring which was great mm -hmm. and then you get these kind of just lazy films that come out sure. like like we just talked about every January because they're cheap they cost nothing sure. you put nobody in there starts. so I think that it, it hurts the genre I don't think that that means that things shouldn't be nominated but there hasn't been what's the last horror movie you can think of maybe The Conjuring as far the as Conjuring. writing and stuff too that, sh that could have been in the talks there I, haven't been a lot I think that James Wan could have really and truly yeah. been nominated for best director for The Conjuring. Yeah. He directed the hell out of that movie. And, Pun intended. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> and and with that being said, and I know I always say this, but watching The Babadook, that performance, S.E. Mm. Davis's performance, was one of the best of the year. There's no arguing that. Right. Now, granted, I've said this before and I'll say it again, apparently there was some weird stuff with the release and it was ineligible. I don't know if I believe that, but regardless, um, that performance should have been talked about with everybody else that year. Yeah. So, you know, they're doing wrong by not including across the board. Mm -hmm. Well, I think as the Academy is going to get younger and younger, I think things will go more that route. It's, it's I don't know. I, no, I don't, I don't want to get into, uh, <laughs> into politics yeah, real quick. Is, but, but yeah, things will age out. Here's hoping. All right, what's next? All right, well, keeping on the horror track, Selena asks, why do you think there are no more good horror movies? There are plenty of good horror movies. I think there really are. I just think they're on TV a lot of mm -hmm. the time. Uh, I think TV is the place where horror is thriving. Uh, you're seeing great performances. You're seeing compelling arcs. Um, you know, The Walking Dead is the biggest show on TV for a reason. And, you know, I always stump for Penny Dreadful. I think that is art. And I think that is just as um, cinematic as anything you get in the theater. But I also think that, you know, like you were saying, Christian, you know, you have studios who realize what cash cows they have. You know, genre fans are always going to show up. Genre is cheap to make in, in a lot of different ways. But, you know, to, to this question, and this is a serious answer to this question, Carrie Fukunaga was supposed to right. spearhead it, a, a two-part Stephen King adaptation of Stephen King's It. And, um, you know, for me as a horror fan, this was one of the most exciting things that could have possibly happened because it was a serious director who yeah. was getting major accolades, who was who is um, known for his classy, edgy work, who wanted to spend time and money making a real horror movie. Right. And the fact that New Line let that slip away because of whatever reasons they say um, is complete you know, bullshit. I'm sorry, <laughs> earmuffs. So, um, so with that being said, you know, the 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 thing is, the, here's the here's the thing. I think that a lot of it has to do with money. I love what Blumhouse does. Blumhouse is a low mm -hmm. cost production company. They make low budget horror movies, and they often give their creators creative control. And I think that that is a great thing. However, I also think that you need to invest real money into serious projects, so that you can have these. 
classy, classic, scary, uh, phenomenal uh, phenomenon like I've said that word three times in this show. But uh, horror movies like The Conjuring and The Conjuring, by the way, the first one was done for twenty million dollars. Right. That's nothing. So you know, they, everybody just needs to get serious and let me be in charge. Oh yeah, <laughs> do it. Hey, uh, I'm not the horror expert, so I'm going to leave it to Clark. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's next? Desi Pearson writes, should D23 become an annual event with a large amount of content under the umbrella, uh, under their umbrella releasing yearly? Yes. Don't you run into the same problem that you were just what? talking about before? If you do if you do D23 every year, right? And then because it's normally in say around the October time. And that's Marvel now. So if Marvel starts doing D23 as much, they pulled away from Comic-Con this year because well, D23. It, D23 is more than just, it's Marvel, Star Wars, well, sure. they do Jungle Book, they sure, do sure, sure. But, else. But, but Marvel didn't do Comic-Con this year because yeah. the majority of their stuff debuted at D23. So yeah, you, which I, I think was a mistake. Well, that's what I'm saying. So you're, But you're okay with them doing D23 every no, year? No, I just feel like if they're going to do it every other year, you might as well do it every year. Like, what's the point of skipping, you know, especially when you have properties like Star Wars right. and Marvel? And also because there is no Marvel Con yet, maybe if there's a Marvel Con, I just think having consistency every year. Comic Con's going to hate that. Well, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just more of are they going to pull out of Comic Con? Yeah, I don't know. You? Yeah, I, I have no additional thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one. Okay, the last one is from Kyle Kazoo. Would Movie Talk ever do a Movie Talk Awards? Basically, your own little Oscars. I think we've talked about it before. I know John has talked about it. I'd love to do something too because for, for about five years or so, we've we've done the U Reviewers Awards on YouTube and, and it's a lot of us have been really busy to try to continue that. And I was thinking maybe we could try to do something here and continue that over through Collider. It'd be interesting, but it just have to be talked about. Yeah, I think that's more of a John question. Yeah. I think I think we have discussed before some sort of end of the year type of awards, whether or not we make it serious, where it's like, oh, best picture, best, blah, blah, or we make it silly and like you know, like the MTV Movie Awards, yeah. best kiss, <laughs> <laughs> most desirable yeah. male. Yeah. Hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.